First of all, I'm not gonna claim to have golden ears here. So I want to talk about something today that gets people riled up. Rolling op amps. And I'm not going to try to sell you any magic beans today, but I want to share my experiences with op amp rolling and the installation process. First off, we need to cover the basics. What are they? Well, op amp stands for operational amplifier, and to put things really simply, they amplify the signal. The op amp I'm going to replace is a chip style design, and I'm going to replace it with what is called the discrete op amp. Basically, it uses individual components rather than a single chip. There are different type of op amps as well. And one of the biggest questions that come up is, will it be a single or a dual? And a dual simply means that it amplifies two channels of input and output of the signal, and that is important. You need to know which type your amplifier requires. Really don't fret though. I would suggest either Googling the stock chip that is currently in place. They typically have a marking on the top, or you can just reach out to the manufacturer. Op amp rolling has become more popular, and manufacturers have started to list swappable op amps as a feature. So if the replacement info isn't available on their website, just reach out to their support. The op amp I'm gonna test with today is the Sparkos SS3602 Dual Discrete. First off, I don't have any type of affiliate relationship with them. During a recent video of mine, I had a number of people ask about op amp swapping on the new Fozzy BT20A Pro. So I reached out to them and see if I could get a sample to test and demonstrate the installation. They graciously sent it out without asking for any specifics or guided conversations just offered assistance if I ran into any questions about their product. I'm gonna put a link below to their site if you wanna read any more of the technical info regarding the chips. I did a bit of reading before I installed these and found a number of conflicting results regarding op amp swapping. Many praises, but some calling the task snake oil. Having no previous experience in this area, I took both into consideration. An interesting couple points though. First, the positive information I found. It was noted that discrete op amps can handle much higher power, have a deeper class A bias, as well as deliver a more detailed sound. That last point being much more subjective than the first, but we're not judging anything just yet. What does make sense to me is that a discrete op amp would have an advantage as far as individual components it uses. A discrete op amp will not be limited by space, so it can use higher quality compensation capacitors. All parts can be individually tested and matched for best performance. The individual components are not in as close proximity as an integrated circuit. That close proximity could possibly be adding some additional noise. So here we have the Fozzy BT20A Pro. It's a good option for this test with its recent popularity and advertised op amp swapping features. As you can see, you really just need to remove these three screws. All of them require a two millimeter hex key. The two on the sides allow the front panel to be removed, and the top left attaches the rear plate to the case. Once you have these three removed, you can see the rear plate pulls away, and that will allow you to gently wiggle the front plate off. It's a friction fit, so just apply a little bit of force. Now we can see the two op amps exposed. No need to remove the entire board, it can all be reached from here. You do need to pry the old chip up. I like to use a hose grip pliers, as it allows me to get underneath the chip. Gently pull the chip out. Try to pull it up from the center position so you avoid bending any of the pins. If it happens, don't worry, they do bend right back. So now that we have removed the chips, it's actually ready for installation. In this case, we will not need risers, but I just wanted to mention Sparco sells them if your amp needs more space. Here's the original NE5532 op amp. As you can see, these don't take up a lot of real estate in here. And now, here's the replacement, the Sparkos SS3602 Dual Discrete. The discrete design requires a lot more space, hence why some amps require a riser. I want to point out this notch. It helps you install these in the correct orientation. This is very important for the health of your op amps and the equipment they're plugged into. If you look at the amp, you'll notice the same notch. Line these up and you'll be good to go. Now simply just align the pins and push them in gently. The pins on the Sparkos are a little more firm, so it's a really simple install. But just push them in until they are fully seated. As you can see, the fit is a bit tighter than the stock op amps, but they fit without any issue. The install is about as easy as it gets, really. Generally, this just takes a few minutes. Putting it back together is just as simple. Just loosely install the screws, align the case, and tighten things down.
So now that I have this installed, what do I actually think? Well, first of all, I'm not going to claim to have golden ears here. I swapped back and forth a number of times, but the limits of memory are quite challenging on something like this. We're wading into the waters of psychoacoustics, which deals with the perception of sound. What I can tell you is that I felt it took the sound from the Fozzy BT-28 Pro and presented it in a smoother fashion. The original stock amplifier could get a little bit sharp in the upper regions, so it's hard to say if I feel like these op amps brought it back down to more of a neutral listening state, or they're adding a little bit of a, a touch of a warm coloration to the sound. An interesting thing to ponder on changes like this, yeah, sure, you changed the sound. Does that mean you changed it for the better? or you just acknowledge that it was different. And that's where it kind of depends on you. In my case, in my equipment pairing, I did enjoy the change the discrete op amps brought. I thought the sound was less fatiguing, which is a common complaint of budget Class D amps. The smoothed over sound with a bit of a touch of warmness felt as if I had scaled up the amp ladder. So what are some of the risks involved with something like this? Well, for one, you're modifying an electrical device. So always be mindful and take precautions. I would say the number one risk is just the orientation of the op amps during the installation, but as I demonstrated earlier, it's quite simple to see how they should be installed. I would also suggest testing the amp on a spare set of speakers or headphones during the initial setup. I didn't have any issues, but it's not a bad idea to play it safe just in case something was missed. The other elephant in the room is going to be the price. The two op amps from Sparkos did exceed the cost of the amplifier. But you can think about this in a couple of different ways. If the upgrade sonically improved the sound to you more than anything else in that price range, then it's still a win in my book. There isn't a lot of competition in the $200 range for amplifiers. The other consideration is for the user who just has to tinker. The value of modifying and testing these changes is value enough for many people. They are likely the same person that goes out and upgrades the power supply to a 48 volt option as well. So at the end of the day, it's time to decide if I really thought it was a worthy upgrade. And for myself, I thought it was. I won't go out and say it beat amplifiers five times its cost after this simple change. But I felt as if it did add sonic improvements that were well demonstrated in my listening. If you like to tinker and want to take your budget amplifier to the next level, I would suggest you check out the Sparko site. One last note I want to mention. I realize there's a lot of other options for op amp rolling. I had several suggestions by some knowledgeable subscribers. But out of courtesy for Sparkos generously sending these out, these are the only ones I covered in this comparison. Thanks for watching, consider subscribing, and take care. See you next time.